Hello. Next, on a very special episode of of whatever this is. Sometimes you do these weekly shows and the news just kind of falls at the wrong time. Not the wrong time. The news always falls at the right time. But sometimes when you're scheduled to record the show and share information with people, sometimes they, they, there's a misalignment of timing and priorities. And this one was so important that I had to tease it during the actual episode, but not be able to tell the story. I knew the news. I knew what was happening. I wanted to share it with you. It's hard for me to overstate how big this news is. It's not really startup-y news. It's small business news. Something we've been asking for for so, so long. We've wanted this for so, so long has finally happened. If you're not familiar with Portland, if you've never been to the city, you've never been to Oregon, uh, something about the culture here that will provide context and help you understand the importance of what, what I'm going to describe is that Portland is built on small business. It, it's not a town with a lot of like big box stores. It's not a town with a lot of, of kind of like chains and those kind of things. Like it's local restaurants, it's small businesses, it's retail environments on main street. It's individuals throughout our community who have a very unique perspective on a particular product or idea, standing up a small business to, to, to follow that, that passion and, and make that product available to people. So you know, we do have chains here, but they're more like locally founded chains. So we'll have like the same coffee shop in kind of different neighborhoods, but it's it's only a Portland thing. Or we'll have, you know, Pip's Donuts in several locations in the metropolitan area. Uh, but the it, it's really the culture of craft in Portland and the the culture of creativity here that drives tons of unique, very small entrepreneurial efforts throughout the city, throughout the neighborhoods. And the challenge has always been that the city of Portland has never really had a, an anchor point to support those folks. So if you're running a small business, if you're trying to stand up a retail establishment or start uh, a small product manufacturing or, you know, starting a new food product, like there's a, there, there was really nowhere, no one place at the city of Portland to go. So as a founder, as an entrepreneur, not only were you struggling to build a business, build a community, sell product, generate revenue, all these things, you had to figure out how to navigate <laughs> Portland bureaucracy, the governmental requirements. You didn't have much of an ally there. And so for the longest time, people have been pushing, you know, like we need an office, a small business. We need, you know, a point of contact that every small business owner recognizes and feels comfortable with and, you know, can trust that that person is working on their behalf. And so finally, lo and behold, uh, Prosper Portland, uh, currently, you know, directed by Shea Flaherty Bettine, managed to come up with the budget to open an office of small business. And that was huge. That was a huge win. I, I don't want to underplay that aspect of this story. Portland, the town where small businesses thrive, now has an office of small business, finally. So that's amazing. But then, of course, you come up with the issue, well, like, who's going to staff that? Who's going to run that? Who's going to drive the strategy and vision for what the Office of Small Business in Portland, Oregon, needs to do. So they set out to find somebody to be the inaugural manager person leading the Office of Small Business. And on Friday, we found out who that was. And I honestly couldn't be happier because it turns out Prosper Portland has hired Mitch Doherty, the founder of of Built Oregon, my co-founder at Built Oregon, to uh, head up 
the Office of Small Business. And it's, I thought the Office of Small Business itself was a win for the city. Getting Mitch to do this job is a huge, huge win for the city. And working alongside him at Built, you know, he was always super passionate about consumer products and those kind of things. But he lit up to a whole new level every time he got the chance to work with a small business owner or a small brand or, a, you know, a Portland company that he could pop into and like hang out and check in, you know, products he could buy while he was out and about within the city. Like that was really, that was really palpable in, in working with Mitch and, and, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I can't even imagine a better person to take over this role than Mitch Rorty. Really excited for him uh, and really excited for small businesses in Portland. That's why I wanted you to have that news. So I'm sure there'll be articles coming out about it. Uh, Portland Business Journal, our friend Malia Spencer at PBJ has already written up a story on Mitch and I'm sure there'll be more news popping as time goes on and I'll, I'll try and keep you uh, appraised of all that stuff. Probably the, the show next week, I'll, I'll do a bit of a recap and kind of catch people up as to what's going on. All that being said, if you're a small business owner, you're building a small brand uh, here in Portland, Oregon, Portland proper, uh, y you know, you probably already know Mitch, but uh, if you don't, you're going to get to know Mitch. And the beauty of this whole situation is, you know, you can, you can just call it Mitch and, and he'll help you out. He's going to be that person for the city of Portland. And while I'm, I'm losing a co-founder and, <laughs> and having to take on the interim director position at built Oregon, uh, you know, it's a, it's a win. Like it, it is absolutely something that I don't like it, you're still you're still here listening to me so um I, a I appreciate that and and b I think I think I can encapsulate it as we worked on built Oregon for a decade it's 10 years old it will continue to be a thing but we worked on built Oregon for 10 years that 10 years of work, mostly Mitch, <laughs> that 10 years of mostly Mitch's work has proven the value of a role like his in our community and convinced the city to fund something like that. So to me, huge win, taking it to a whole new level. We proved the concept out and the city acted on it. So that is a best case scenario of what's occurring now. Uh, if you're not familiar with Built, uh, just to kind of give you details on that. So uh, started 10 years ago, Built Oregon is designed to be the voice of consumer products throughout the state of Oregon. As Mitch always likes to say, Oregon is the, is the Silicon Valley of consumer products. We have more amazing brands and talent and knowledge here than anywhere else on earth when it comes to consumer products like, you know, brewing, distilling, cheese making, uh, <laughs> potato salad making. Plus there are those companies that make the shoes and stuff too around here and, and apparel and other amazing things. So, uh, that's what built does we really focus on on that industry so if you're doing something in consumer products in portland you now have two organizations looking out for you you have the office of, of small business and you you also have built oregon so uh, again big news huge news for me personally and uh you know and huge news for mitch but best of all this is a gigantic win for the city of portland i can't wait to see where it goes from here my mic is not in the right spot. Let's fix that, shall we, so that I sound a little bit better. Okay. Comedy of errors. 